Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, MC Mora here. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how you can be consistent and have solid defense in Street Fighter V. In a previous video where I talked about how you can rank up in the Ultra Diamond and Master range, I've said that consistency is the key. You need to be consistent and pretty much have solid defense so pretty much you don't drop points or lose unnecessary games. Now today I'm gonna be showing you a match I had. This is me using poison versus a fantastic Ryu player. This guy is very good in my opinion. He is called Ikari Warrior and this was the final match of a long set of matches. Like we must have played like three or four uh, first to three sets and this was the absolute final one. Now the main key to remaining consistent is pretty much understanding what is called winning conditions. What does the opponent needs to do to have an advantage? Now typically Poison wins this matchup, right? I can zone Ryu with my whip, if he try to jump I can anti-air him, right? But what are the threats? Well in the neutral his main threats are gonna be jumping, right? So he's gonna try to jump, use the air fireball, obviously miss the meaty here. But that's fine, we can trade the fireball, that is a good trade for me. I try to go for the heavy kick love me tender, because obviously that can go over fireballs. Now once Ryu have an EX fireball, the complexion of the match changes entirely. And this is what you need to understand, right? Notice this, once Ryu gets an EX fireball, he can throw it, it will stuff most of Poison's attack, it will give him a knockdown into Oki almost from anywhere on the screen. Alright, so let's keep going. Now, Ryu have one EX bar. What I need to do here is not do anything. This is pretty much where throwing any normal or any medium raid, anything with poison is a high risk maneuver, right? Now he has thrown the fireball, now I get to move. Now in a previous matches he had showed me that after throwing the EX fireball, he's likely to throw another one, right? Because he was dashing previously, I was trying to intercept the dash, so he switched over to throwing another fireball. Now I'm gonna get the jumping, and we get the jumping combo, right? This is pretty much the same, be active, he doesn't have meter, obviously got the jumping. Now he has the one fireball, or the one EX fireball, and notice again I switch it to a passive playstyle when I'm pretty much not doing anything. Once Ryu is in V-Trigger, it's pretty much the same case, right? Because any single fireball will lead to a knockdown and Oki anywhere on the screen for him. So this is danger time. No need to zone at this moment, just play it a little bit more safe. He's kinda afraid of the jumping heavy punch, because Poison have a bullshit jumping heavy punch. We get the jumping combo, and we get the round. So the key to staying consistent here is honestly matchup knowledge. This is understanding the matchup. On a basic level, you can understand, oh, you have specific moves, they are safe, they are unsafe, and you know, you have an idea of what to punish in some situations. But this is deeper understanding of the matchup. I play active at set points, I play kinda passive at a different ones, right? Now he doesn't have meter, so notice I will be even more active with my zoning. Web. Now he doesn't have one, but block, nice, we are safe, right? So this is the first key, right? Understanding win conditions. Now he doesn't have bar, let's play a little bit more active. It's kind of buttonsy in this situation, but it's fine. Nice anti-air, now I'm passive again, wait till you block everything. Obviously this was kind of a read, I expected that he would do another fireball. It kinda failed and I got punished. Now we are knocked down. This also comes down to understanding win conditions. What can he do here? Right? If you're in this situation, the worst thing you can do 
let's try to tank because a shimmy against a V trigger one active Ryu is gonna kill me, right? So I have to block, right? And because I have to block, I have to wait for an opening. This opening will be a normal that is canceled into a fireball or a heavy normal, right? So if I block something heavy or a normal that I know he will cancel into the fireball, that is V reversal time. That is how you think about it. Or if he gave me some distance, I can jump over him if he tries to play the shimmy game. So let's see how it goes. Right? So notice that I did exactly what I talked about. I saw the crouching medium punch. I know he was gonna cancel into fireball. I did the V reversal. This pretty much got me out of the corner situation. I could have taken, I could have tried to challenge with normal. I could have tried to jump over him. But the key was to pretty much understand the safest option. So you have to play the matches in the safest way possible. Think of it as playing 80-85% safe and pretty much 10 or 15% with some danger, right? Or some randomness. Because you do need to be a little bit unpredictable as well. You can't play it completely safe all the time. You need some unpredictability. Right, notice he has the, the V trigger fireballs. Now I am playing totally passive. I got him off of me. I didn't do anything. Now I'm just waiting because one knockdown means that my life will be in great danger. Right. So at this point, at this point, he does have the V trigger fireballs, but he wants a big comeback, right? The V trigger timer is running out. Mentally, at this point, you know the opponent wants a big chance. So because he wants a big chance, he is likely to jump. Dashing will most likely get him only a throw, right? So he is more likely to jump or throw one of these knockdown fireballs that will allow him to contain his pressure. So notice, at this point, I switch to a completely passive blaze style. Jump, anti-air, jump, anti-air, jump, anti-air again, right? He is desperate for the jump in uh, to land so he can get like a knockdown and to follow ups whatever. And I am pretty much playing completely safe by the book. Now he has the one EX fireball, so it's time to play passive once more, right? Wait for the fireball. Now I block the fireball. Now I get to zone, right? I'm st Notice this, I actually, once he's thrown the EX Fireball, I started to immediately start swinging with my medium, my heavy, medium range. Now I'm playing the game again, right? Now he is a little bit getting a little bit desperate, trying to dash, trying to play a little bit more aggressive. But you know what, I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna take all the throws all day. Yeah, I don't care about any of that stuff. <laughs> and we go for the overhead again you need that little bit of unpredictability, right? Because I did it once more, and I actually had V-Trigger cancel, so I could do Crouching Heavy Punch into V-Trigger. There was a lot of options. Obviously, at this point, he's more focused on the comeback thing, right? So this is about two things, mainly. Understanding what the opponent need to do in the neutral, and understanding what are the safest options on defense. Keep it to maybe 80-85% calculated, uh, safety and 15% risk, right? Obviously, you need to risk it at some point, whether that is jab, whether that's wake up DP, V shift, whatever. But try to always think of what is the safest way to get out of the situation. And that is pretty much how you stay consistent. Obviously, you're not gonna win every match, right? But that's how you stay consistent. Now, what is the key to beating autopilot? And this is honestly pretty much just practice. Like you have to take breaks. Play a couple of games and then take breaks. The moment that you notice that you're autopiloting and you are more likely to autopilot against players who are weaker than you, right? If you're playing someone who's not challenging, you are likely to autopilot. So try to play players who are more powerful than you or at least challenging, ones that will uh, pretty much force you to think Playing against them will force you to use your brain a little bit more and don't play too much because you will fall into autopilot with extended playtime. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. It helps the channel so much. I will be leaving a link to the Patreon page and the Discord server page in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe.